Hey, what's going on, y'all? Sean here um, with Back to Basics Fitness. And I want to talk about what I am referring to as the bare minimum mindset. Make sure you like, make sure you share, make sure you subscribe, all that kind of good stuff. Now, what do I mean by the bare minimum mindset? The bare minimum mindset is a mindset that I would contend that most of us have where we do enough activity or we eat enough healthy food, so to speak, um, to to allow us to be able to say that we're doing something, but we're not doing enough to actually get results. There is a difference. So, you know, you probably learned like I did in school that rickets was an illness that um, we dealt with in, in American society some time ago um, due to, um, it, well, really it was characterized by like bow legs, and um just weak bones overall a lot of bone breaks and stuff like that in particular with kids um you know due to really what amounted to a severe lack of vitamin d okay and so like literally kids were getting curved legs kids were easily breaking bones and whatnot and this was rectified in particular by the fortification of um foods with vitamin d okay vitamin d by the way is really more better characterizes like a like a hormone okay it's um yeah anyway so that was an that was an instance where the fortification of different kind of foods you know milk and stuff like that with vitamin d was actually very helpful in preventing rickets because you don't really hear about rickets you know um that much however if you know anything about vitamin d vitamin d is a very very protective nutrient when it comes to um you know autoimmune disease um cancer and it just is really really good for the immune system in particular however if you look at the um levels of vitamin d overall like in in the american population most americans are walking around vitamin d deficient when i last got my vitamin d checked several years ago now when i, I requested it um but i was deficient in vitamin d now i was kind of surprised but i was deficient so i was like the optimal level according to the people who give the blood test results is like 30 I think it's nanograms per deciliter, if I remember the units correctly. And mine might have been not quite 20. Okay. So I was quite deficient. Okay. However, the thing is, in our society, we pretty much have solved the whole rickets issue. You know, unless somebody is like really, really not eating any, any food worth any value whatsoever rickets has kind of been dealt with however most people are still deficient and i believe the reason why is in part because of a, a bare minimum mindset you know we might see food contains vitamin d or whatever but we're still not having high enough vitamin d levels because i think we're actually trying to just make sure we meet a threshold a lot of times Vitamin D is readily available from sun exposure. Vitamin D, I believe, you know, for some people is not really an issue, especially if you live a certain proximity, a certain closeness to the equator. Um, as long as you get outside for, you know, maybe a half hour a day. Now, you when you live in a society like ours, when you're inside most of the time, then getting um, enough sunlight to get the vitamin D you need actually becomes a concern it used to not be a concern but like we've increasingly started to spend more time indoors and so now things like this are a concern for 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 humans but my point is this we think that perhaps we can easily solve it mm, well i just kind of go take a quick supplement i'm not against vitamin d supplements i actually take one myself i just get a quick supplement real quick and and um and deal with that um or i don't know 
Um, I drink milk and the milk has vitamin D in it. That'll take care of it. But in reality, if you really think about it, when you consider the fact that, you know, getting enough vitamin D was not a concern for people who spent most of their time outdoors, you see how we're kind of doing like a bare minimum. A lot of times what our goal is, is to see how much of our current lifestyle can we maintain and just kind of get away, um, you know, get past the possibility of having illnesses and whatnot based on uh, nutrient deficiency or movement deficiency and whatnot. But what I'm contending is that is like a, that is a very erroneous mindset. That is not a mindset of optimization of health. You know what I mean? So even another one. So when I was studying become, to become a personal trainer in 2014, 2015, um, one of the things I learned about was the American College of Sports Medicine's recommendation that you get a minimum of 150 minutes three times. I mean, I mean, no, no, 150 minutes a week. That's 30 minutes, five times a week of moderate intensity exercise. Now, if you look at that a certain way, you'll be like, okay, well, I'm getting my 30 minutes in a day. If you're doing that, I promise you, I'm not trying to trip out on you or nothing like that. But that is a bare minimum for exercise. But in no way does that amount of exercise possibly amount to enough to help us to have optimal health or even to avoid all illnesses. When you consider the fact that even for those of us who exercise on a regular basis, um, exercise can't really like nullify all of the bad effects of sitting down all day. Think about that. So when you think about that and you think about 30 minutes a day, five days a week, that's cool, but it's not even remotely enough when you consider the totality of the human lifestyle. It's not enough to even start to lose weight, according to um, the ACSM, okay? So the point, again, that I'm trying to make is we have to really change the way that we see, um, like, when, when we embark on healthy lifestyle changes, when we start to exercise. Now, there's always a case for starting slow, especially if you're somebody who has not been, you know, doing whatever it is you're trying to start doing. Maybe you haven't been exercising at all for several years. You know, maybe you deal with various, you know, lifestyle diseases and you're wanting to change your diet. Sometimes you do have to be kind of careful depending on what you're doing um, because of medications and stuff like that. So I'm not, I'm not advocating for you to like be risky, but what I am saying is, especially once you've gotten started, do not be afraid to really ramp up your lifestyle changes. So maybe you've been exercising, maybe you've been walking every day, doing about 30 minutes a day walking. That's great. That's probably done a decent amount for your health. But if you are really trying to make a change to your lifestyle, do not be afraid to go past convention. Okay? Don't be afraid to take that stuff way up. Think about the fact that an Olympian will exercise five or six hours a day, five or six hours a day, you know, not, not a week, which is a lot in and of itself, but five or six hours a day for their body to be optimized for their sport. Okay. And so we can't do but 30 minutes a day, you know, to optimize ourselves for like a healthy life where we can go and do the things that we're supposed to do in this world. So. Again, you know, or, or, you know, as long as I eat an apple a day, an apple a day keeps the doctor away. And so we remember that saying. And so, you know, maybe some of us get an apple a day and that's great, but that's not enough. It's not enough. You know, or maybe you take a multivitamin. That's a big one. A lot of times we take multivitamins and we think we're doing good and maybe we eat pizza all the time and, you know, drink you know, sweet drinks and all this kind of stuff. But we, we make sure we get that multivitamin in. But you got to remember, like, that's not possibly enough of uh, really a multivitamin is supposed to supplement a 
healthy lifestyle for you to really, really get optimization of your health. Okay. But a lot of times we're taking multivitamins is kind of like, like it's going to somehow kind of cancel out a bad diet and it just doesn't really work that way. So again, examine your life. You know, I'll say this and I'll let this be it. So there's a lady by the name of Terry Walls. She's a doctor. And um, if you look her up, you'll see that she's kind of known. She's known for, um, she dealt with most multiple sclerosis, the autoimmune disease that affects like the nerves and brain. A lot of times it leaves people unable to really move properly and they'll be in wheelchairs and stuff like that and just having a lot of issues. Um, but she was actually able to overcome um, MS with a lot of lifestyle changes, like very significant lifestyle changes among those being the adoption of eating, you know, um, was it nine cups of vegetables a day? Nine cups, nine cups. Now, that's way more than the recommendation that we used to get from the food pyramid. And I'm going to look this up here real quick so I don't misquote. So the food pyramid, which of course now is, you know, I guess obsolete. Um, but the food pyramid, let me, let me make sure that I find the one that we used to, um, here it is. According to the food pyramid, they were recommending that you get three to five servings of vegetables a day. Okay. Now this lady was getting at least nine servings of vegetables a day, nine servings of vegetables, not including fruits, nine servings of vegetables. And we're not talking about like the starchy ones and stuff like that. You, you know, I think it was mainly leafy greens and some of the other various colors of vegetables. And her aggressive approach to improving her health, not just, uh, I just kind of get enough, but I'm going to really take this stuff to the next level. I'm going to get as much nutrients as I can. I'm going to get, you know, whatever. That approach is a lot of times what you need to get results. So don't assume that making a healthy lifestyle change doesn't work and that now you need to just kind of go and rely on pills and potions and whatnot. You need to ask yourself, are you trying to optimize your health or are you just trying to say that you're doing something for your health and therefore you're not really getting much of any results from healthy lifestyle changes? Remember, a lot of what people recommend out there, especially like, you know, stuff like food pyramid and and um, you know, uh nutrition labels. This is based off of minimum guidelines. You want to optimize your health. Don't be afraid to go past, way, way, way past whatever they're saying in regard to um what you need nutrient wise. Don't be afraid to go past that. Oh, I will say, you know, you know, water is one of those things you do need to get a decent amount of. I'm not necessarily a fan of, you know, um, the whole eight or 10, eight ounce cups of water a day, that's fine. But, you know, I think a lot of your water, um, your what the water that you need is supplied even by food as well. But you do need to be consistent with your water consumption. And that needs to be pretty much your only drink. But um, I just want to throw that in there. Optimize your health. Don't get the bare minimum. You want to optimize it. So don't be afraid to take it up a notch. As we get older, it becomes increasingly important to maintain and build muscle. Muscle helps you burn fat, stay mobile, and can contribute to longevity. However, many people have no idea how to work out to build muscle. My mini workout series on Patreon provides you with my body weight mini workout video library. These workouts use little to no equipment which means that you can do them in the privacy of your own home. They start at beginner level and progress from there to ensure you continue to see results. Every workout is a full body workout, hitting chest, back, legs, and glutes, as well as other muscles in between. Become a patron today and receive access to my series of mini workouts, plus access to a digital copy of my book, Eight Weeks to Transform Your Diet and Your Health. By combining the workouts with healthy diet changes, as outlined in my book, you'll definitely be on your way to weight loss, improved health, and visible results. Join me at patreon.com forward slash Sean B2B Fitness today. If you like this content, you might also be interested in one of my books. 
Learn how you can take steps literally today to successfully manage, control, and overcome common issues such as high blood pressure, diabetes, and belly fat. It's all about putting power back in your hands to improve your own health. Get your book copy today by the links in the description or by visiting seanmcclennan.com forward slash books. Also, don't forget, hit the like button and subscribe and join my email list at seanmcclendon.com forward slash subscribe.